Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, March 3rd, 2019, and we have a great watch list for you next week, and we're going to run right through this. Miss Vegas, what do you think? Well, 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 it's been a busy, busy week, and I'm so excited about tomorrow's Monday. I just wish today was Monday. So uh, we're going to talk about Roku, NIO, BPTH, Zynga, GSB, GE, and we're going to close it off with CHK, which is Chesapeake Energy. So let's get right to it. Um, so Roku, uh, as you guys know, solid earnings, solid guidance. Uh, what, a, what a chart, what a run. And uh, what I'm going to be looking for here once Jim takes me through the chart is I'm actually going to be looking at Roku from an options perspective. I want to actually see if there's good options available Maybe, I mean, the, you know, based on the chart, but I would look, I'm going to be looking for something around, I don't know, 70, maybe $70 strike. And I think I'm going to look at the March um, 8 calls, which would be expiring this week. And I may even look further ahead. I may even to, you know, $72 calls uh, that may be around April. Those are a little pricier, but let's, let me stick to the March 8 ones for now or even March 15, I might be looking at those in the $70 range or $71 calls. Um, and those ones are, you know, they're going for about $199 for one, but still very promising company. Uh, very happy with how it's performed. And Jim, over to you on the chart, because that will help me, you know, maybe look at the options. I have no position in Roku, no calls, no stock. I will be looking at this tomorrow, but if I can get your opinion on this, the stock, there might be people listening that want to trade the stock and maybe get some ideas for a swing trade and or maybe consider an option idea for an expiry in the next couple of weeks. So right over to you, Jim. All right, Miss Vegas. Well, Roku, we had a great call on this one here. It did break out and the room was very excited about a week and a half ago when we run from this 54 area. Resistance was right around 54.81. And it ran all the way up to that next to that day, all the way up to around 64. And then it's been keeping an upward wedge for the last five days. And there's a lot of uh, fat cats that are very bullish on this stock right now. And I'm going to pull up the 20. This is the 20 days. So I'm going to pull up to 10. Show you this little run we had in this little channel right here that we've been in. And it, it's held support pretty well. Pulled back to that trend line. And... The trend line now at support level, it's going to be coming out Monday. It's going to be right around 67.28 with a resistance high of right around 70.96. This does have good pullbacks and good bounces real fast right after the pullback. We, every day, it seems like it, and this day we had a real good run. It ran for all the way from 65 all the way up to around $70, 69.90, and pulled back to that trend line, bounced up. There's another little scout play from 65.60 all the way up to 67.42. And I'm going to magnify this up just a little bit and show you how it bounced up. And then Friday we had another run on this to resistance level at the 69 area. It held up pretty good. It did pull back. And the pullbacks are, are generous, but yet they, they fall in the trend. And I'm going to pull up a one day real fast and have a look at it. We did pull back to the 200 SMA. I noticed the 20 days starting to curl up right after hours. We did hit that 20 day right at 69.15. I think we're sitting at a pretty good little support area. I do have a low support at 68.03 in case it does want to pull back. But this 68.71 right here is a solid, solid first support. And I'm going to type that in red so I'll remember it come Monday, which is tomorrow. And that's okay. So we have a low support at 68.70 or a first support with a low support at 68.03. And what we want to do is bring it up to the double top resistance at 69.89 and break out. I'm very bullish on this trade. I'm going to pull up the one year just to show you how high it can get. It can reach up here to the 77.57 area. And um, so let's keep a good eye on this. Any small pullback on this will definitely retrace for a new high, for at least a recovery. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be NIO. 
Yeah, so Nayo, Nayo, how high can we go with Nayo? Well, you know what? We had a nice run um, with the stock because of the fact that uh, there's some, you know, excitement. Remember, they had an interview on TV last week on 60 Minutes. Um, they're giving Tesla a run for the money, and the demand for electric cars in China is just so hot. I mean, they just can't even keep up with the orders. And the rumor out there is that they're going to beat earnings. And uh, hence why there's a lot of interest in these option calls. I still have some $9 calls. I'll be looking at some $10 and $11 calls because there's a good open interest in them. Uh, so I will disclose tomorrow which ones I take. Um, earnings, though, is Tuesday. So you can expect tomorrow uh, some excitement in the NIO stock, uh, either from a swing trader perspective, day traders that are going to trade it and scalp it uh, for a day trade where they don't want to hold any swings at all. And I think we'll see some action on the on all fonts, on swing, day trades, and options. And uh, earnings is Tuesday. Now, I did go on the website. I saw that they said Tuesday, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Earnings Whisper says it's uh, Tuesday morning pre-market. Either way, don't care. All I know is the earnings is coming Tuesday. So I'm excited about that whenever it comes out, whether it's the morning or after hours. So I'm definitely going to hold on to my option calls. Uh, into earnings and um, I love it so we'll see what happens though but and as usual you know do your own due diligence I'm just sharing what I'm doing and uh, that's it for now so over to Jim on that chart because that chart gave us a little bit of fun last week it ran all the way to the 1060s yep this 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 chart here we called the triple bottom down here at 592 once it happened it broke out it did hit my resistance level I had here at six, at 750 and once it broke that, here in the last week and a half, the last Sunday it had great news. Uh, one of the local, new, one of the nationwide news uh, broadcasts were talking about Nile and then how how popular it's getting in China with the cars. The electric cars are like half price of Tesla, so they're going to be a very good competitor to Tesla. And I think a lot of investors have gone to te uh, gone to Nile and got out of Tesla and and started putting their money in Nile because this has a long way to go. I do believe when earnings come out, they're going to be good, and I also believe that this can go a lot higher. Now we do have a resistance level at 1380 on it, and with a with a strong resistance at 1265, with a, a, a then these are long targets of 1157. So I do believe, and I've done well with the options in Nile as a beginner. I'm pretty flabbergasted. And um, I want to thank Miss Vegas for getting me involved in the options plays. So let's pull it down to a 20-day chart real fast. And that was a year. We've had a real nice run in a week and a half. I called the option out at around $750 for an $8 target. And you see where we've gone beyond that. We hit that $1064. We've had a two-day pullback. And then started recovering some on Friday. And we do have kind of a, a pennant flag breakout on Friday with a squeeze coming in. So I do believe this is going to bounce up higher, but it also can pull back a little bit because there might be a few little sellers in it. And let me pull up the daily. You see what I'm talking about with the pennant flag? And then we had it sticking out here and it squeezed to the to to the to the under the 10 buck area. We did close at 10.06. So we got a resistance level. We got a break on this at 1018. If we can do that, we're going to go ahead and move up to that other areas that I've been talking about in past videos. This is Nyla, and again, I think we are at support. If it does pull back, you have a low support at 979 with a 991 for your first. And we're sitting right here at the pivot point right now where we're going to determine where it wants to go but any pullback on this you will see a rebound recovery and that's the way i look at nile and the next one we're going to talk about and i'm going to step away just for a second and i'm going to let miss vegas talk about bi biopath and this was the great run we had on friday <laughs> you're gonna say bio bio <laughs> well you know what biopath it was, it, listen because we're talking about nile we're thinking bio but this is bpth and this is uh, Biopath uh, Holdings. And, uh, you know, this company is a company that works on cancer research. They're working on a uh, infusion drug that would help with blood cancer. So I really hope that this company 
um, has a good, you know, has a good presentation. They will be presenting uh, later this month, actually April 3rd, but towards the end of this month, they will be at a conference and they're going to talk about their phase two trials. So I hope that they'll have some good news there. Um, but this is a low float and uh, ran beautifully on Friday. And one of the reasons that, you know, one thing to look at when trading a day trade, especially when there's a lot of action on it and the float, really got to look at the float size and compare that to the volume that's come in for the day. I really like to look at the float rotation, which basically is an uh, comparison from the number of shares traded versus the number of shares in the float. So if there's a million shares in the float and it's traded 3 million shares already, the float's traded over two times. So it's, it's rotated the float actually three times. So that is a sign to me that the demand is there. The supply and demand is just, you know, it's there and therefore can expect to have the high of days continuously break, break and break. Got to just be careful sometimes with that because it gets very, very volatile where the stock will run, pull back, run, pull back. And then you're in, let's say at the high, at the high of day break, and then it pulls back. And you can get shaken out very easily with, with setups like this. So you have to know how to trade them. Got to be confident. Uh, you have to trust your trade and trade your plan and position size properly. Because as the price goes up, each time you scalp it or you're in and out of it, it's going to cost you more each time you buy the stock. So you have to be careful. So I don't always recommend something like this for newbies only because it's too stressful. And, you know, the money that you put in, you could easily lose. And, you know, here you are saving for your first trade. And next thing you know, you've lost a lot of money. So be careful if you're new doing something like this. Don't just jump in. Don't chase. Um, honestly, I'd rather just like sit out and watch. Or if you're going to trade, do it small. You know, do 100 shares. Don't be doing like 1,000 shares. Um, and the next thing you know, you've lost half your account. So be careful. Yep. Position size. And when you have experience trading these volatile stocks that have low floats, then of course, you know what to do. But when you're first starting out, it is so exciting to see a move like this. But really be careful because I've seen people do chase these low floaters and get burned. And then the next thing you know, they don't have any money for trade. So be careful. But it was a really good run. And I think we, it's still on the watch list. And we're going to look at some pullbacks. And uh, I'd love to hear Jim your thoughts on oh, yeah. on this stock, please. Oh, I, I, this is one of the trades that you just love to see. Um, I love to see them because the share rotation was, was huge on this stock. And it, it, it's a very low float. It's got under a million in, in, in float on it. And it had everybody's attention Friday. And I, this stock had a high, year high of 6180. And it and it's had a channel, a descending channel here. It finally gave up at, at right around this area right in here. That was right around 26.98, 27 bucks. Fell down to this 1788 area, and then I do believe this thing can go a lot higher. But I also believe that uh, Miss Vegas is right, so we're going to pull this up. You got to be careful with it and cautious. But yet Friday was probably one of the best trades I've seen in a while. Well, we've seen quite a few of them. I can't shake a leg on that one. But here we go. This did. This is the breakout that we had Friday. It was, it, you could tell it started doing something on Thursday when we had that little bounce here. It caught some people's interest. It did hit a high of 261 that morning where it started to break out. And this was hot on the trail to, to run up higher. We had two big one hour candles that ran up to all the way 674 from that low support area right around 255, 260 area. I'm going to pull up a daily one minute. Like I said, this was a low float stock and had a lot of people's interest. So come in here Monday. I'm going to be looking for a pullback on this stock right around these dotted areas in this trend of 576 to 60612, right in that area. It did bounce up to resistance and pulled back to that place a couple of times, created a solid support. Then at the end of the day, the 20-day crossed over all the moving averages, which is a 50, a 100, and a 200 SMA. And then right into close, it pulled back, and it hit that little area that I'd love to see tomorrow, and that's right around 657. It's right around 660, 
and we didn't close too above after hours. It didn't close up too much after that, which was sitting here right around 695. So let me pull up, let me magnify this up a little bit. A little too much. There we go. This is the after hours look on it. We do have a resistance we got to break, and that's going to be right around the 847. First resistance is going to be right around the 784 area. So that's where we want to take it to. And we do have another resistance right here at 6738. So the way I think this stock's going to trade, we're going to have a small pullback on it. And then people are going to get in on the dead cat bounce. And they're going to try to run it up. And if we can break this 847 resistance, we're going to take it up to 10 bucks is my next target. Now, that'll be when we hit this 883, 884 area. It might hesitate a little bit and pull back to this support of 847 and then bounce on up. But I really do believe that this can run up more. It's just going to find out Monday is going to be the test. And that's BPTH. It's got everybody looking at it. It's a very low float stock. And I, I mean low float as in under 6.7%. 6 Six hundred and seventy-five thousand. I do believe that everybody's going to have their eyes on this trade come Monday morning. And the next one we're going to talk about is do you know Zynga. Mr. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love Zynga. Mm -hmm. Can I just tell you this company has taken its little sweet time? But I mean, if you love video games. I mean, I actually like video games. I used to play them all the time, but I just don't have time. And I wish I could, I, you know, sometimes I should just take a time out and play a video game because it just kind of like gives me like an escape. But, you know, my video games back in my time, I still love Pac-Man and Donkey Kong. And I mean, things have just evolved. But Zynga is just a really popular gaming company. And you know what? Uh, they look great from a swing trade perspective. And those of you that like day trade, well, we've been in the swing trade here from $4.75. So the swing traders that are in this trade uh, from that alert from a couple of weeks ago are actually still holding Zynga. And uh, they're just moving up stop losses, uh, which is a smart thing to do because they're preserving the gains. Some of them already have taken half the shares off the table, taken profits along the way and keeping half the position. So that's smart trading. And we encourage you to take profits. I mean, why leave money on the table? Um, take your money. Um, the other thing, too, is definitely the Zynga option calls uh, for April 18. Those are looking really good. I uh, will be looking at those a little further tomorrow. But I'm very happy with the way this chart looks. This is just like I just see green, green, and green. This, to me, if you guys know, I follow Glue. And I've been uh, you know, a fan of the Glue stock, G-L-U-U. And this to me reminds me of the glue. I mean, glue stock and Zynga, they're in the same line of business. I mean, it would be so awesome one day that one of these companies buys each other out. But uh, for now, Zynga has a uh, good setup looking for this continuation. I love that it had a new 52 week high, new 52 week closing. I've just seen this go up, up and up. It's been a slow grinder. So this is not the kind of stock that you buy it and it's going to go to like 25, 30 cents in one day, I'd be surprised. Um, this is moves very slow at a very nice pace. And you know what? That sometimes works beautifully for swing traders. And some day traders don't like things that move super fast. They like things that move throughout the day, um, but they don't need to, you know, be ripped all the time. So uh, Jim, over to you on Zynga, because I'm loving this chart and I just can't wait for you to tell me what, is maybe going to happen here with Zynga? Well, I think it's a real good call that you made on Zynga. You've been talking about it for a couple of weeks, and it has run up in a couple of weeks real nice. I mean, real nicely run on a couple of weeks. I'm going to pull up a three-year chart and show you what we're looking at here. We've got a three-year breakout that happened right back here at about 452. Now it's run up to 534 on Friday. Friday, Friday close was 534 with every day almost being a green day with pretty good little spreads on this on this little stock. And let's go up to the uh, one year, one year high also. There's the double top that we had to break, and that was right around the 450 area, 449. And actually, you know, we had a little bit higher on it, but that 450 is where I'm looking at. 
and it did pull back it couldn't do it pulled back to low there right around four three thirty seven and then at the end of that one then during the month of december it ran up during the christmas season pulled back the last couple of days of the month and then we've ever since then we've had a good trail all the way up all the way up from a low support right here at 350 to up 534 so let's look at the daily first let's look at the 20 day 20 days a nice trajectory we just had one little pullback here back on on 2619 where it pulled back pretty good pulled back from 30 cents which is not a very big spread and then she bounced right back into close so it pulled back first of the morning and then she ran right back up and proceeded with a day high of right around 483 that would have been a nice trade right there on zynga and then she followed the, the 20 day all the way up and still the 20 day is above the 50 the 100 and the 200 so i've got a little channel that i want to see of support level and that's going to be right here in the 518 area to 528 and i'm going to pull up a daily chart daily one minute that don't tell you much so i'm going to pull up a five day 15 minute and get a better look at it and so we have a low support on that five day here under five bucks right around 496 i'm going to draw me a trend line there we had a nice breakout last week a good three day run so she did pull back to that first support at 528 and that's what i'm calling this little channel a support area between 518 and 528 so if it does pull back there that's fine if not we could probably pull back to the 530 area and hold but we got a low support right down here at 503 second support is going to be right around 511 and then we've got the first support channel which is between 518 and 528 and i do believe that can pull back to that area and bounce right back and retrace back up to the new highs and create a double high at 535 and then break up to that 550 and i was looking at the option play on that one there also and that 550 strike price on april the 18th is only 19 cents with not a very big spread between 17 and 19 cents so i'm going to be looking for that area come tomorrow and see if i can get in at a little cheaper price see if they pull back a little bit and probably get in at that 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 april 18th call that's my opinion and take that with a grain of salt because i've just started beginning options here last month but i've got 14 years experience reading these charts so that's going to be a great benefit oh yeah that's going to be a big bonus that's why you know jim and i work really well together because a lot of times, you know i like to ask him his thoughts on the charts because it helps me forecast you know which kind of option call am i going to really look at uh whether i'm going to look at something that's going to you know next couple of weeks expiry or maybe next month so i like to look at all the criteria but his charting really has helped me pick um stronger option calls setups so thank yep. you jim for that yep and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be a bonus play for us it's going to be gsb Okay, so GSB uh, is a new stock for me. It's called Globalscape. And uh, what they do, they do um, automate data exchange across system applications. They basically move information into the cloud and they do it with compliance. So I'm going to give an example. When you make an online bill payment on your internet banking, you transfer from your bank account and you transfer it, uh, let's say, to your Visa card company. Then your bank takes that and then transfers the money to the visa company so that it reflects on your next statement that your payment was received. All this happens in the cloud in a secured filing system. So this company provides that cloud integration and makes sure everything's encrypted and everything's transferred securely. So what I liked about this company, cause I've never, you know, I've never heard of them, never traded it. Uh, they just had their earnings report and what intrigued me the most was, first of all, I really was intrigued by this chart. Very pleased with the chart. Uh, I, you know, definitely was happy. And I'll let Jim talk about that. But what I liked the most uh, was the fact that they talked about their balance sheet. And I like the fact that this stock's under $10. And I really like that they have $9.2 million of cash and cash equivalents and zero debt. 
and that they're going to monitor their capital markets because what they want to do, this company, they want to actually repurchase some of their shares. And um, they also are going to enhance shareholder value. And they feel that by doing all of that, it'll obviously make their efforts, um, you know, steadfast efforts will reflect in the price of the stock longer term. So I'm very excited about what this company has to do longer term. I'm definitely going to revisit this, but I am not in any position. I just liked it from a swing trade perspective. I'm even liking it for someone that's looking for something that they would like to hold longer term. Uh, definitely check out the website globalscape.com and read all about it. Do your due diligence. I mean, this might be something that you want to hold longer term only because of what I said, zero debt, $9.2 million cash, and they're looking to repurchase shares. Very strong companies from everything we've seen so far. And uh, I like that it's under $10 as well. So uh, I wonder if this will be on maybe Investor's Business Daily Report because they like to highlight companies like this. So I wonder if it'll ever show up. But in the meantime, Jim, I want to hear about this chart because, you know, maybe the swing traders that are listening would be interested in this stock. And I think you mentioned there was options. So I'm going to look at options tomorrow. But let's talk about this chart. Yep. This is GSB. This is a yearly chart. I'm going to pull up a three-year just to see. I think this is a three-year high also. Yep. We did have a high peak right here, right around 550, 552, and it did pull back pretty hard to a support area, and that support area was right around 361, and we did break out from that 361 pattern beginning of last year in 2008, or at the end of last year, 2018, and then yesterday we had the big volume spike. It looks like every time it gets a volume spike, it, it really runs up good. But this last Friday was a huge breakout on this trade from the 20 SMA on a yearly chart, which is, uh, that's a three-year. So let me pull up a year. I want to get that mixed up. Yeah, it did break out from that 20-day on a three on a one-year chart. Resistance was at a double, triple top here at 474. We did jump to the gap. The gap did have a pivot point right around 606 where it closed at with a $7 high. So I'm going to bring this up to a daily three-minute chart and see what I'm looking at. I want to see no lower than 565 support level. That's going to be my red line support that I want it to hold. I think we can hold there. We did have a touchdown right back there, right at the beginning of the day for the first oh, 45 minutes or so. She did pull back to that 565, and then she held gains into that little channel, which was around 582 to, oh, I'd say in this area of 606. Did hit it, pull back, run up, kind of hit a pivot point in between, or 592, and then she did close at 606. So this stock can pull back a low, 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 low support, and no lower than 506. I would like to see. Then we got a big gap, and that's just gonna, not going to be good for the stock. So our first support, our second, and then if that don't hold, that 506 is going to be your low, low, low support. This is had a three-year breakout, also had a one-year breakout, and we're just going to have to see where it goes from here. But I kind of see a little pullback on it, and then. We've got to break the resistance level of the 614 and run it back up to 7. And that's GSB. I want to see what kind of tension it gets. You know, the volume's not really uh, consistent consistent on it. I'm going to show you by 180 day. You can see it just has little volume spikes. So it's not consistent in volume. So I do expect a little pullback on this trade, but then I might get it in for a scalp. And that's GSB. And the next one we're going to talk about, Miss Vegas. Oh, yeah, it's another G. It's called GE, General yep. Electric. You know, this company I love. I grew up with GE. Um, my mom used to work there. So I really, you know, sad to see what happened to the company. But I'm actually very happy what I am seeing with the company. And, you know, I had a nice little run in the past. And uh, Jim and I were just looking at the chart earlier that, you know, this one's looking good. And, you know, where I'm looking at it from, not really looking to buy the stock. I'm actually going to be looking to buy the option calls and uh, some of the option calls that really interested me here. And I think Jim can show you that there. 
um, was the option calls for uh, April 18. So if you are considering options, uh, I'm looking at the April 18, probably the 11 and $12 calls. Uh, there's some good opportunities there and I'll have to see what they go for tomorrow because uh, some of these, uh, you know, the options, I don't know what the stock's going to open at. So I can't really say uh, what the ex exact price would be, but uh, I will say that I was very impressed with the open interest on the options and where the interest appealed to me most was the 12, um, it was a $12 calls. Uh, there's they're going for about 12 cents, which is about $12. So I kind of like that, you know, I mean, if you're new to options trading and you wanted to buy a GE option call with a strike of $12 expires April 18, you know, you could be looking at maybe buying it for just $12. Maybe it might be a little less, maybe a, a little more, but it's actually a tiny, tiny investment to make. And this is a good way to get your feet wet with options because it's not a lot of capital that you're risking. I mean, the most you could lose is $12. You know, I don't think that would make or break a trading account. Um, but you know what? Maybe you could take this 12 and it could turn into 24 or 36. I mean, I don't know. All I'm saying is that this is a really good option price to get to try an option call if you've never done it before and hopefully see if your account can grow. So definitely going to look at this one tomorrow and I'll definitely share which ones I pick up because I'm liking the open interest. And Jim, I'm liking the chart. So let's talk about that chart, Jim. I'm liking the chart also. And I'm also liking the options. I think earnings come out on this on April the 19th. And they have the April 18th option on this stock right now. And that $12 mark price is at 14 cents uh, a contract. With well, the next one at the $11 is 35. So you got a pretty small little spread between 32 and 35 at the $11 strike on April the 18th. So we're going to be watching this. I think we did pull back to a perfect support level. And that here's the one year chart. We did call the bottom on this trade and it has, and, and it did started getting positive uh, comments and upgrades on stock when it was down here at that $7 level. And we did close to a high of up to 12 bucks here. Just, a couple weeks ago i'm going to pull up a 20-day chart and have you look at it i do believe this company was poorly run and that's why it went down with emmett on 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 board as a ceo but now we've got a new ceo that's it's kind of changed it around a little bit it got a little bit too big for its britches i think and then now it's kind of fine-tuned and we did have a high up here right around 1174 and that's where that resistance level is and we did have a sharp pullback, and that was off some good news that came out of it selling uh, part of its bio part, which I think it was this company was way overextended for what its main job perspective was to begin with. And so we did have a good, nice ascending flag pattern on it after that pullback. It didn't hold. It did pull back some more. So we've had another two-day pullback on this thing to my support level which I called out in the room right around 10, a little above 10 bucks. And we did have a high, let me pull this up to a daily one minute. I've been calling this out pretty good. I had target up here right around 1048 to 1056. We did hit that from previous runs. That's where I sold my op first options on it at. And then now we've pulled back to that low support of 1008, 1005. And it did run up to 1030 and I tell the room it needed to break that 1030 to move up. And I said that because we had these two little spots right here where it did pull back and bounce. And then we had the pull back and it did try to bounce up to that support to that resistance level. And then later on the day after hours, it did pull back up to that 1030 again. So I think there's a lot of option. Uh, I heard, you know, on Friday that people were buying the 12 to $13 calls on this stock in April and, and a little bit later. They're cheap and there's a lot of contracts out on it. So this is one I'm going to definitely get back in come Monday and I'm going to try to see if I can get in on the pullback if it pulls back to the support level of 1014 and I might scalp it from that 1014 area to the 1030 if I can get away with that. If not that 1007 is going to be your solid support. And this is GE. Keep a good eye on it. Everybody's a little bullish on it. 
and the news that comes out has just been good here lately and the next one we're going to talk about is another options play that Miss Vegas likes and that is Chesapeake okay so Chesapeake um, I like this company. I mean, I actually had bought some option calls and, uh, the option calls I bought, uh, February 4th, I bought 10 for 11 cents. So it was only $110 investment. And I, you know what, happy to sell them finally on Friday, uh, sold them for 19. I, they actually went up to like 23, uh, but I didn't pull the trigger. And, you know, it was a bit of a rocky road because I have to say that the calls that I bought were actually down half price um, the next day after earnings. And I was like, what the heck's happening? And uh, I thought, well, I guess I'm just going to wait and see what happens. I mean, it wasn't that much money on the line. And I thought sometimes the market likes to react the next day or two days after. And you know what? I was pretty right on that one because they actually started buying the stock on Friday. Um two days after day two into the earnings. So I think we'll see more on this uh, company. I'm going to be looking also at the company or, um, options for the $4 strike for April 18. And the reason I'm interested in this too is that the stock has uh, a float and there's a lot of shorts that are in there, over 200,000 shares uh, shorted. And I think they're going to get a short squeeze very soon, probably this week. So I'm interested in the stock even more because of that, because you guys know I love to trade stocks that have um, short squeeze and I uh, love to um, have a barbecue. So, Jim, over to you on CHK. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm sitting there looking at your option calls too, and I like that, that uh, what was that, April 18th, right? They had that $4.06 one, and then... That 350, which would be in the money, kind of pretty close to it, for 14 to 16 cents. So I'm going to be watching that. If we get any kind of pullback on this stock, I bet you that option price will go down just a little bit. And I might jump in at that 350 area on April 18th. But it'd be a lot cheaper to get in that 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 four dollar one. And I'm going to show you why I like that. So I'm going to pull up the the one year chart. I've been watching this stock for over three years closely every day it pops up on my scanner as one of the high volume trades it has very good volume and i was playing this stock when it was up here at 460 to five bucks here this year alone and then it's pulled all the way back to, to 171 and then we had that big bounce on it and it's bounced up to the resistance level in this old channel which was right around the three the the uh, 290 area up to 323, 320. We're back up in that area again. So what I want to see is a small little pullback to support level. And I'm going to pull up the 20 day and show you what support level I'm talking about. Support level of just under three bucks between this 296 and 299 area. And if that don't hold, we'll hit the other support level, which is right down here. And that's right around 280 to 282 and i just can't see it going any lower than that if it does i got a little bitty channel right here at 275 to 278 so yes we had a real nice breakout on this friday and miss vegas was able to get out of her options call she didn't get scared she held on to it and she took her profit because it was about ready to expire in a way and you take profit when you can so this thing can pull back to that $3 area. If it does, oh, I got one here I missed here at 302. I'm going to draw a little trend line right there too. It could stop at that 302 if it wanted to. But we kind of had a little bitty pennant flag. It did try to pull back a little bit. And it pulled back to that 313 area after hours. And then she went ahead and rebounded up a little bit. This is a stock that's consistent in volume. Very consistent. As you can tell, and then the last part of the last week, it started really gaining in volume. And Thursday, it had kind of a little little pitfall, but it pulled back to that $3, that 286 area, 284. And then the next day, it ran all the way from 284 up here to the resistance of 322. So this is CHKey. Keep it on one of your high volume uh, trades. 
I do believe it can go a little bit higher and maybe run up to that $4 area. And let me pull up this one-year chart just one more fast time and show you what I'm talking about. This here little resistance level, you see where it pulled back? And then it ran all the way up to this little place right here, which is right around 377 so I'm thinking about getting in that $3, 350 strike price. And that's going to be CHK. And then, then we got one little one we want to talk about. One of Vegas's great plays she made. And that's LLY. Yeah, so, you know, Eli Lilly, I just want to, and really, it's really to showcase. And I don't know, Jim, do you have it there? Or yep. Can I do it? I have okay, it. So I was just going, thank you. So I just wanted to, you know, show people that really don't need a lot, a lot, a lot of money to uh trades um to trade options especially i mean stocks it's harder you have to put in uh, you know uh, more capital to actually make a decent profit and so here's an example and 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 i will say that doesn't mean every single option trade is like this i've had ones that i bought and didn't work out and i've lost half the money or i lost the whole thing um so i'm not saying that every trade's like this but i just wanted to show just the principle the example uh, with LLY, you know, we what I noticed on this one was tons of money going in the option flow, millions and millions and millions of dollars going into this option for the $125 strike uh, for March 15th. Now, I noticed this not recently. We're talking like three, four weeks ago, and that's when I actually bought this, okay? And I paid at the time, you know, $75. I only bought one, and uh, look where it's at now. That $75 contract is now worth $455. So my profit on that is $380. And I haven't sold it yet. And March 15 is still two weeks away. I'm very interested to see where the stock's going to go. Because when I was looking at the actual chart, this chart to me looked like it was breaking out. It was making uh, new highs. And uh, I really want to see what it's going to show me this week. So... You know, I only have one contract, and uh, if I had two, what I would have done, I actually would have sold one because at least I would have taken my money plus, plus, plus. So I'd be basically riding the rest and not, you know, affecting my PL because I wouldn't be taking any losses because even if that option contract didn't work out in the end, I took the first contract out with full profit, so I really wouldn't be out of pocket my original investment times two. So I will say that this chart has a new 52 week closing. It is on an expansion breakout. There was a major volume surge on Friday. I mean, this is a beautiful chart. This has just been following this nonstop. I, the, you know, this company's into pharmaceutical company. I just think there's more to this. I just cannot like, obviously I don't know, but there's something happening here. There's just so much money coming in here. So much action. And uh, that's what intrigued me the most. I also have another option call in the same company uh, for uh, April. And the one for April, I have the $130 strike, which is more than the other one. But when I bought that one, believe it or not, that one cost me $99. And the reason it cost me more was because I obviously was buying a, a, a later expiry date, okay? And also I was forecasting, you know, uh, believe it or not, I'll show it to you guys tomorrow because I don't have time to cut it and send it to Jim. But I did pay for that one. Like I said, $99 for the option call. And that one right now is going for $305 for the same contract. So, And I only paid $99. Now I could sell it for $305 each. And actually on that one, I was good. I bought two of them. So I actually invested two, actually $198 was my investment to buy two contracts oh and I'm up now $412 on it. That was so my market, the market value is nice 610, but my profit right now is 412 <laughs> if I was to sell it. So, I mean, listen, $200 turning it into 400. That's amazing return, right? Yeah, it is. That's a one thirty dollars strike. Yes. Yep. I'm showing it to them right here. Now. Yep. But you know what? I still think the value, <clears throat> going to go up because the the that's still far away and the stock is in a breakout so i think that will be worth a lot more this week as the stock goes into its breakout uh channel very nice so there you go so this is why this is why i want you know people with small accounts not to give up 
and not think that, you know, I don't have a lot. What am I going to do? How do I start? You could should start maybe, I believe, with options and not this option, but even the ones I talked about, like GE, start with something small, get, you know, learn, come to the room, come visit, come do the free trial. We really give a lot of support. We talk live on voice and we're here to help. That's why we're here. So if you have time during the day to come check us out or even once a week, doesn't matter, come by, you know, you're not going to learn if you don't come visit. So, cause we talk to you guys in real time and that makes a huge difference in trying to learn and versus watching videos, you know, Jim can explain things in real time to you so that you can learn. It's almost like being in a live school, like in a, in a classroom learning live. So come by. And love to see you, love to hear from you. And thank you so much for listening to our Sunday edition of the Market Report, getting you ready for this coming week. Jim, anything else to add? Not really. I just, this is our going to be our fourth week with our chat room. And it, I'm really overwhelmed on how it's turned out. It seems like I've been in a few chat rooms and I know it's ours. So it, that means of some importance, but I do like how Miss Vegas has, has put it together and and we've got a good, a lot of good traders in there, and we just picked up the Trade Ideas Scanner. We've got it pretty well in sync with all the experience that I have and some of the experience with, with many traders we have in the room. We did put together a good scanner, and we do have a couple others for option traders and block trades. And we just want to go ahead and finish this out with today's date. This is the Vegas and Jim Aftermarket Report. Um, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. Today's date is March 3rd, 2019, and we love stocks.